I love herbs. I love all plants. They're a big part of my life. I don't just cook and eat them. I take care of them and I study them. I get to know them kind of like how you want to know everything about someone you love. So the angle of how I talk about and analyze them is a little different. So on that note, let's talk about the personality of Mbunu. The word Mbunu comes from a region in Chad, which is a country in Central Africa. But this herb is also found throughout the African continent. In Central Chad, it's called Dopara Talguz. It's called Eku by the Yorubas in Nigeria. It's called Karkashi by the Hausas in Nigeria and Bungu in Northern Nigeria. It's also called Chabalaba or Lalu Kaminho in Guinea-Bissau. It's called so many names in Africa that it's best to just list it. I'm showing you this so you can see how established this herb is to the African people. There's actually five known species growing wild, eaten and used for all kinds of medicinal purposes throughout Angola, Namibia, Botswana, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Congo, as well as all over South Africa. Our ancestors have been consuming and using this indigenous herb topically for its many medicinal properties for ages. It's what I can safely call an ancestral staple. I can't really call Mbunu a bush and I can't call it a tree. There are different types, but mine is more like a stalk, like corn. One seed creates one stalk, but one stalk can split into multiple stalks. Mbunu has a super high protein and fiber content. It's very strong. Look how thick this stalk is. The wind's not gonna break this. It's so fibrous, I can't even break this small twig. Mbunu is one of the lowest maintenance herbs in my garden. It can adapt to almost any environment. I first grew it in an area that received a lot of direct sun and it flourished. Now I grow it in a shaded area and it's still flourishing. I live in a wet tropical location where we get a good amount of rain, but during periods of drought, I hardly have to water it and it still does really well. A large part of why this herb is so drought tolerant is due to its mucilage glands. The slimy nature of Mbunu is an adaptation that allows it to withstand severe dehydration without any tissue damage. When I rub most leaves between my fingers, they break apart very easily. But Mbunu is so tough and protected, it takes a lot to damage it. The leaves are more rubbery compared to most leaves. I can tell when I'm dealing with an ancient herb by how resistant it is to destruction and disease. It's had so much time to develop its defense systems. Mbunu is virtually indestructible. Mbunu is packed with all types of nutrients, minerals, and magical chemicals. But what stands out to me the most are these guys right here. Alkaloids, flavonoids, terpenoids, steroids, and saponin are very protective type chemicals. And Mbunu has a good amount. These are called secondary metabolites in plants. They have no direct role or function in the growth and development of the plant. Plants create these types of chemicals to make them more competitive in their environment. They are the plant's defense system and protection. They even help the plant heal its wounds. And guess what? They do the same thing for us when applied topically or ingested. These secondary metabolites are protective in multiple ways. First, they're anti-everything. Antibacterial, antiviral, antimicrobial, antifungal, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-mutagenic, anti-carcinogenic. So they keep the microbial flora of our scalp in check, as well as stand guard and keep the bad critters away. They also provide UVB protection, which is really important. I put a link below to a video that breaks down why that is and what UVB damage looks like for your scalp and hair. 
These protective chemicals also help your scalp and hair follicles heal faster from injuries you may not even know are present. There are even some studies that show terpenoids as a promising tool in the fight against melanoma. So these secondary metabolites that Mbunu produces so much of provide a wide range of protection for our scalp. So if you look up anything about Mbunu, most of what you hear is that Mbunu has saponin and that saponin is what gives Mbunu its shampoo-like abilities. But I'm here to dig a little deeper and give you more information. Did you know that saponin is also very protective? It has an antioxidant effect. It protects your scalp from UV damage and it also has a perfect amount of antiseptic content. But there's something else really cool about saponins I bet you didn't know. Saponins are really good at binding to the cholesterol in our sebum and enhancing our sebum coverage. In other words, if used consistently, Mbunu can help make your hair more and more breakage proof. So yes, Mbunu is a great mild cleanser. But if I were to use one word to describe it, I would call it the protector. Fun fact, did you know the seeds are also really good for your hair? It may not look like it, but these are very oily. In fact, many African tribes make cooking oil out of them. It's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, anti-hypertensive, anti-tumor, and an insecticide. So it's really good for your scalp. And best of all, it's oil soluble. So you don't have to get your hair soaking wet to receive its benefits. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how I prepare Mbunu for my hair and talk about the pros and cons of its slimy texture. I'm also gonna show you how to extract the seed oils, then end the video with a good giveaway. I hope you learned something new about Mbunu. And as always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.